Welcome to this travel and history tip, and we will be taking you to the Camera Heritage Museum at 1 West Beverly Street in Staunton, Virginia. With over 6,500 cameras and accessories, this is the largest camera museum on the East Coast. The initial collection was from a gift from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. And through the decades, people have donated their cameras to this fabulous museum. There was no one in the museum the day we went except for the owner curator, and he was kind enough to show us around. There was so much to see. Fortunately, he has a handout that provides information on each of the exhibits. He let me look through this viewer to understand stereoscopes. And you may have seen old-fashioned photographs where there's two images and when you look through the viewer, it combines it as one to give it a 3D effect. The Polaroid camera from 1937 to 2001. Well, it says, or present, depending on your point of view. Polaroid is known for their instant film cameras made from 1948 to 2000. Eight. The Polaroid Corporation went through two bankruptcies in the 2000s, and the new Polaroid does not produce instant film cameras. Well, someone took a picture of us, and it was a little Polaroid camera the other day. I wonder who owns that. The exhibits include drawers of old photographs from the 1800s, and this camera was exceptional in that it was used by Barnett Kleindest Jr., who became the White House photographer of Presidents Teddy Roosevelt, William Taft, and Woodrow Wilson. That was sort of cool to stand in front of the camera that Teddy had stood in front of at one time. The portrait you see here, along with an interesting camera, marked exhibits 13A and B, is of a famous cinematographer. She did propaganda films during the years when Hitler was coming to power before the Second World War. Lenny Reifenstahl was commissioned to produce a film entitled Triumph of the Will that would market and promote the power of the German military machine. The camera you see here was one of her cameras used to capture much of the 1936 Olympics. This is a famous movie prop. Can you guess what it is? This is the weapon of a Jedi Knight. Not as clumsy or random as a blaster, an elegant weapon of a more civilized age. Luke Skywalker would recognize this type of prop as a lightsaber used in all the Star Wars movie series. Native Virginian photographer Bernie Boston became a Hall of Famer in the Society of Professional Journalists. During his career, he covered every president from Harry S. Truman to Bill Clinton. And the young man you see in the photograph? It is thought that he resembles the actor Robert Redford at the Vietnam protest in March of 1967. Exhibit 15B is the actual camera an Olympus pen used by Bernie Boston to capture the image of Press Secretary James Brady at the assassination attempt on President Reagan in 1981. On the same shelf, there are also many cameras owned by Bernie Boston acquired by the curator and personal friend of Bernie Boston. There is camera on top of camera, as you can see. This Exhibit 16 is Big Bertha Camera. If you are a fan of baseball, take a moment to look at the big camera marked Exhibit 16. This is one of eight cameras built to capture baseball pictures from 1919 to 1926. This one was used by the Baltimore News Post and Sunday American. You may notice as you look into it that the image you see is live. It was a very large camera that was used high up in the press box in those days to capture images spanning from first base to third base. And uh, these are the moon cameras, Hasselblad's 500EL. Uh, I'll just leave that one right there. This Exhibit 18 is a Hiroshima camera. In August of 1945, President Truman used the first of two nuclear weapons to help bring the war with Japan to an end. Don't forget to subscribe. And while you're at it, Hit the thumbs up. An American B-29 bomber, nicknamed the Enola Gay, dropped a nuclear bomb on Hiroshima that would wipe out 90% of the city. In the aftermath of the war, Canon, a Japanese company, made some of their cameras from leftover parts found in Hiroshima. The camera you see here is a Canon S1, one of only 100 made from the Hiroshima parts. It is behind glass because it remains slightly radioactive from that historic nuclear explosion in 1945. Interesting, isn't it? Exhibit 19 a Pearl Harbor camera. In 1941, this camera preserved an important piece of American history. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor was the defining moment that led the United States into World War II. This camera, donated to the museum by a Japanese photographer, documented the bombing as it occurred that tragic day. The photos were taken from a Japanese aircraft far above the fight as the battle raged. This is the authentic camera used to record history on a day that will never be forgotten. Exhibit 22, Underwater Cameras. 
It is hard to imagine, but less than 50 years ago, the ocean depths and the creatures that lived there were virtually unknown to all except for the divers who had seen it firsthand. By the 1960s, divers like pioneer marine explorer Jacques Cousteau were discovering how deep they could dive and wondering about the unknown monsters of the deep they might find fathoms below. Because recording his discoveries in the ocean for all to see became important to Cousteau, he designed the self-contained amphibious Calypso 35mm camera. This opened up a whole new world, underwater photography. Cousteau sold the patent to Nikon, who took over production and sold the series from 1963 as the Nikonis, which subsequently became a well-known series of underwater cameras. If you have preserved a special memory using picture photography in recent years, you have likely had a Kodak moment. This was a famous marketing phrase of the recent past, coined by photography's most famous company, the Eastman Kodak Company. No history of photography would be complete without the accomplishments of its founder, George Eastman, whose picture you see here. The picture was taken in 1880. Brownies from 1900 to 1986. The Brownie camera changed the world of photography. Manufactured by the Eastman Kodak Company, the Brownie was the first camera produced for and marketed to the average consumer. The first Brownie was made in 1900 and the last was in 1986. There are about 414 models made, and we have 412 of them on display. Boy, don't you wish he could get the other two? I do. How many of you remember buying Kodak film? Raise your hand. This was a fun exhibit. It included toy, spy, and miniature cameras. As the brave and fearless spy heroes in movies and TV silently breaks into the villain's headquarters, he reaches into his jacket pocket, removes a tiny camera, and begins taking pictures of the villain's secret plans. Known as spy cameras, the Minox, cameras like the one seen in Exhibit 25A was the highest quality ever made. Of the many spy cameras manufactured, the Minox was the finest of them all. They were an important part of the Hollywood crime-fighting arsenal of 007, better known as James. James Bond as he fought international crime on the big screen. But these cameras are not just fictional Hollywood props. How many of you have gone into one of these photo booths? They were fun, weren't they? At this one, you could look behind the camera that made this machine pop out that little strip of, what was it, six pictures of you and your friend making silly faces? How about these slide projectors and viewers? Uh, they sort of look like um, old-timey hair dryers to me. He had a whole collection of clocks and, of course, more and more cameras and famous photographs. And this photograph of, you might know her as a famous first lady. Yes, it's Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy O'Neill. Nasses. She was a reporter, and these are two of her cameras. And this camera is being held by three old friends, the Three Stooges, Larry, Curly, and Mo. I can't do this place justice, but I can recommend that you go there. When we left, as we walked down the street, we tried to tell everyone we encountered, you gotta go in the camera museum. You've gotta go see that place. It's so interesting. As the sign says, wanted old cameras. Donate a piece of history. Why don't you take it in person? Unclassic road trip. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.